Hi, spooky friends. Welcome to Kelly Does Stuff. Today, I'm going to show you how to turn styrofoam into a wooden fence. I mean, technically, we're making, well, not even just technically, like, we're actually making the styrofoam look like wood. We would need some real spooktacular magic to turn it from styrofoam into wood. Now, the first time I did this was last year when I created a wooden fence for the ghost town section of my Halloween display. And the ghost town is kind of tucked into my Bayou and Haunted Hill section. Now, I've thought about doing a wooden fence for my carnival section, which is quite large. So I'll probably just do a couple sections each year. So I'm going to show you how to make your styrofoam look like a wooden fence. And once you've got this technique, you can make any type. You can make wooden pillars, wooden beams, whatever you want. And of course, you can make it for Halloween. You could do this for Christmas. Once you've got this technique down, you can just go to creative town. <laughs> Okay guys, let's go ahead and get creating. Now to create accessories like this, I'm usually going into my box of scrap styrofoam. But if you were to start this from the very beginning, this is the foam that I use. It's a two foot by two foot by one inch panel, pink styrofoam that I get at Home Depot. And then the tools needed for this is a dull pencil, a sharp box cutter or some type of blade. And then I also use this rough scrubby type of brush thingy. I don't even know what the name of it is. I get it uh, at Home Depot. You can probably just get it at any hardware store, Amazon. Another tool that I use, which is completely optional, is this hot wire table. And it's really your choice, of course, to decide how thick do you want your fence to be. I like to make mine a little bit thinner. I just allows my styrofoam to go farther. Um, it does make it a little bit harder to stand up on its own if I cut the thickness of that from that one inch base to say a half inch. Um, so if you wanted to just have your fence stand up without any additional support, it will definitely stand up better on its own with that one inch base. And here I'm using the hot wire table just to kind of get it to the height that I want. And then I will run it through a just my hot wire table, run that styrofoam through again to get it thin enough to the, to the thickness that I want. And here I have my camera and myself set up at a very awkward angle, so I don't do this very well, but I just kind of wanted to show you how the process would work. Again, completely optional. Once you have the styrofoam to the size that you want, you're going to create the planks of wood using that dull pencil. I do mine about an every quarter of an inch. You don't need to press very hard. You're just creating that impression into the styrofoam. And again, that's why I love this styrofoam because you can do a lot with just some simple tools. Of course, if you do have hot wire tools, you could create this project using those as well. Next, it's time to use the blade to create grains of wood. And depending on the stroke that you use, the pressure and the angle at which you hold the blade in the styrofoam, you can get some different looks. And you just mark it up as much or as little as you want. Now, since this is going to be a Halloween creepy carnival fence, I'm going to rough it up a little bit. I'm gonna use that blade to do some scratches diagonally, and then I'm just gonna start carving out notches and chunks of the wood. And this is up to you what you want your finished piece to look like and where it might be going into your village. If it's a Christmas village, you might want this to look a little bit nicer and less roughed up. Next, I use this coarse brush to create additional grain detail scraping across the styrofoam. And I make sure that I change the pressure and the direction and the stroke, how I'm using the brush as it goes across the styrofoam. This will be helpful when we go to paint it as we want to get a lot of the detail to come through with the highlights and the low lights, shadows, all of that jazz. Another thing that I will do is just press that brush directly on top of the styrofoam without any sort of scraping motion. Those bristles will go in and create little indentations, little dots and circles of wood, and that just creates more 
in shorts and more detail to your fence. Before I could move on, my dog Angel reminded me that she had an important message for all our spooky friends. Once you're satisfied with the look of your fence, it's time to paint it. I like to do a base coat of a dark brown, and the way that I like to get my brown is to actually mix the black and brown. I just like this tone and shade the best versus buying a, a dark brown color. And you're gonna wanna thoroughly cover in your darkest color first. I use a big, thick round brush for this. And then because we have lots of little grooves, we're gonna go in with a smaller brush and make sure we get a lot of paint down into all of the dark, deep recesses, the areas that we've scraped up, all of the little holes that we've created. Once that is completely dry, we're gonna go in with our dry brushing technique. And I, again, wanna do a black brown combination and add a little bit of white because I want it to be sort of a grayish brown. And I just keep mixing until I get the color that I want. This is totally up to you. You can do it any way that you want. Now for this first layer of dry brushing, it is going to be a heavier dry brush. I want to coat my styrofoam in this next lightest color, but I don't want it to be saturated like that first layer of brown. So I dip my brush in the paint, brush a lot of it off. You can see there onto my cardboard and then do quick, fast strokes over the styrofoam. And this you'll start to see is the beginning of bringing out those grains of wood. Now I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting with some different color depth. So I'm going over this with just that brown color, maybe a little bit of white or a little bit of black mixed in, but just to kind of give some mid-tones so the fence has a little bit more dimension, like maybe the fence age differently in different spots over time. And we just are going to continue the dry brushing process, letting each layer completely dry before we go in with some different shades or lighter colors. Now, before we go in with our lightest highlights, we're going to do a wash. And you can do this by mixing some black paint into some water, or if you have a spray bottle, you can do it. We're just gonna dilute that black paint, and then we're gonna run it over our fence. And this is going to allow that dark color to fill into the grooves of our fence, into all those little notches that we carved out. Just another great way to add more dimension. And then you're going to dab it away with a paper towel. This will take that dark wash off of the top surface part of it, but allow it to stay behind into all of those grooves. Once that is completely and totally dry, you're gonna go in with some more dry brushing. Get the light shade that you want, and then dip your brush into the paint brush most of it off and then begin once again going lightly over your styrofoam. You don't want it to be heavy so it doesn't go into all of those little cracks. You're just gonna start pulling out more detail with that grains of wood. There is no particular rhyme or reason to this. I like to do it quickly, roughly, so I'm not thinking too much and creating, accidentally creating any sort of pattern to it. You might wanna do certain areas where you've got a lighter section and then a darker section. Really, I just kinda go with it, put on some music, have some fun with this, and I, I will do layer upon layer upon layer. And eventually I tell myself, it's probably time to stop or we'll just spend the rest of our life adding highlights to a fence. <laughs> One of the most important things to remember when doing dry brushing is to make sure that you let each layer completely dry before going in with the next lightest shade. Otherwise, you just end up blending your colors. And the lighter shades are really meant to bring out the detail, to 
uh, highlight the different ridges and kind of the top most elevation, I guess you could say, of the styrofoam. Another thing to remember, as you get lighter and lighter shades, put less and less paint on your brush. You just wanna get drier and drier. Go lighter and then if you need to add more, you can always go back in over and over and over again. But as you get lighter, do less paint. So here you can see why it's important just to have a little bit of paint on that brush because as you go over the deep cutouts, the paint won't seep in to the darker areas and we'll just brush over the edges. So it's kind of like an effect of outlining. It helps that darker area look even darker. All right, so even though we did that dark wash to go into all those grooves, I wanna make those cutouts even darker. So I'm going in with a completely saturated black paint and filling in the hole and then even a little bit around those holes and notches. And then I'm gonna drag the paintbrush down um, around those notches just to create a little bit more depth and dimension. <laughs> I just kind of go round and round round add some more dark color add some more light it's totally up to you again spend as much or as little time on this as you want And then here we go again, once I've added all of that dark detail in that I like, I'm going back in dry brushing some lighter shades and different colors to help blend that, help that not look so stark and contrasty. And that's what's really great. If you add that darker color in there and maybe you have certain areas where you're like, oh, maybe that's a little bit too much or I saturated a little bit too much, you just go ahead and bring in some lighter colors with that dry brushing again and you just keep doing it until you feel like it's good. Here comes my favorite part. I'm gonna use Mod Podge to add some signs. For my ghost town, you saw that I add those wanted posters. For the carnival, I'm gonna add these carnival signs. And I actually got these on Etsy, um, but I'm sure you could probably find them somewhere, print them out, maybe create some of your own. And I was thinking about this, if you wanted to do it for Christmas, you could do like a Christmas tree farm, or maybe if it was a North Pole village, you could do something where like the reindeer live. You could do a candy cane farm or candy, a reindeer petting zoo. I don't know, you could, you can really just have fun with this. Uh, just do anything you want. To apply these, I add the Mod Podge to the back of the poster and then I will also apply it on top of the poster in the area around the fence just to make sure that it sticks really well. Now one thing to note, this Mod Podge is actually a gloss finish, so there will be a little bit of a glossy sheen around the poster where the Mod Podge was. So just keep that in mind. I don't mind it, but um, just keep it in mind when you're buying your Pod, po Pod Podge, <laughs> Mod Podge, what you want your finished look to be. <laughs> And there we have it, our wooden fences are complete. Let me know what you guys think and let me know if you are planning to or make any types of fences for your Christmas village or your Halloween village. Let me know of any other types of projects that you'd like to see. I have so many ideas, it's just a matter of filming them and editing and getting them up. I wanna thank you so much for watching. I hope that you will consider subscribing. A huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed. I love sharing these videos with you all. I love hearing your fantastic creative and village and holiday ideas. Please consider sharing this with five or 10 spooky friends. I look forward to seeing you guys next time and happy creating.